Oh, so my job, I, um, I'm, I'm the Chief Economist at the Bank of England and a member of the Monetary Policy Committee. So one of my roles is I'm one of the nine people that sit on the Monetary Policy Committee and uh, are responsible for setting monetary policy in order to hit the, the government's 2% inflation target. And as Chief Economist, I also if, um, direct the, the main economics area of the bank and, and who are responsible for providing the briefing and analysis which goes up to the MPC each month before it makes its decision. And what's your, um, what kind of economic challenges are we facing at the moment? Um, so we've suffered a, um, a deep recession, as, as, you, as you well know, during 2008-2009. Um, We're starting to come out of, of, of that recession. We've, we've been growing, our economy's been growing for much of the past year. There's a concern that more recently development in the rest of the world has caused that economy to slow. And so one of the challenges is just how big a uh, uh, an impact we're going to see from the rest of the world on, 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 on the UK economy. And, and that's why, that's one of the key reasons why we're up in the northwest um, at the moment. Um, the only thing, the one thing I'm certain of when I set monetary policy, and it's about the only thing I'm certain of, is you can't set monetary policy sitting behind a desk in Threadneedle Street. You need to get out and about and find out what's, what's really going on. Um, the Bank of England does that all the time. We have agents based in the Northwest who each and every day go out and speak to uh, companies, different businessmen and women, finding out what's going on. Um, but also different members of the MPC come out and find out firsthand. Mm. And, and this week, um, all nine members of the Monetary Policy Committee have been in the Northwest um, speaking to, to businesses, um, to trade unions, local authorities, finding out exactly what's going on in, in the region. And what have you found out? So, the, my experience of speaking to businesses over the last few days is, is, is what's going on here is pretty similar to what's going on in, in, in the rest of the economy. We did, see, um, uh, we did see recovery for much of this year, um, and, that, and that's been supported in particular by growth in manufacturing and, and, air, in, and in exports, and we've seen quite strong growth in exports over the, over the past year. And in the Northwest, is in a good position in that respect because it's, it's got a strong manufacturing base. Mm. But more recently, what's been going on in the rest of the world has started to, to push down on sort of some of that growth. And, and domestically, uh, people are still uh, feeling very nervous and uncertain, and that's holding back spending, both in terms of companies, in terms of their investment um, plans, but also families and, and households in terms of their spending on the high street, where partly due to the, to the squeeze that people have felt in terms of their incomes mm. and their uncertainty means there's still a you know, significant degree of caution on the high street. Um, and what's your reason for, for visiting AstraZeneca? Um, so when, when we come uh, to a region, you want to sort of see as many different types of businesses mm. as, as possible. AstraZeneca is an incredibly important uh, employer uh, around here. Um, understanding um, the issues and challenges facing both AstraZeneca but the pharmaceuticals industry more generally um, is one part of the jigsaw puzzle but we've been speaking to a whole range of big businesses and smaller businesses from and both manufacturing and then the service sector and sort of putting them all together um, to help try and, and form a picture of what's going on and then what happens is each of the MPC members who are out in, in different parts of the North West this week will all converge back in, in London and then they're put into the pot the different things they've found and that will help us form a picture of what's going on in the economy before we go to our, our next policy meeting. You mentioned local businesses and I mean a, a town like Macclesfield really relies on small businesses which are obviously struggling uh, to grow and, and in, in, in one respect survive. Um, what's your advice? I mean, what what could help them? What's what what you know? What could you do to help them? Essentially? Well, um, as, as you may know, the the Monetary Policy Committee this month decided to um, increase its scale of quantitative easing mm. um, more. We decided to increase our scale of asset purchases by another seventy five billion pounds. That injects seventy five billion pounds into our economy. That should lower the cost of borrowing. And for companies and also help to stimulate demand and support growth in the economy and so hopefully that will, will start to feed through um, to businesses in, in the northwest and in Macclesfield just as it will into the rest of the economy. 
I mean, there's a fear that the um, there's a fear that the banks may or may not, you know, may not well hoard that money if you like and not pass it on to businesses. I mean, what can you do to kind of reassure these businesses that they're going to get the support from the banks? So, key and perhaps the one key message I'd like to explain to your readers is the way quantitative easing works. It doesn't do it. By the, via the banking system. We don't give the money to the banks. We go around the banking system. And essentially um, what we do is we, we go out to large in investment companies, insurance company, pension funds, and we go to them and say, um, I'm going to buy £75 billion pounds of gilts off of you, mm -hmm. and in return I'm going to give you um, cash. Those insurance companies and pension funds in turn will say, well, I don't want to hold cash because I need assets to which you would give me some um, some returns over in the future and they in turn will then go out and reinvest that money into other types of assets including corporate bonds and, and equities and it's that's the process by which this money then starts to flow into the rest of the economy so a, a key feature of quantitative easing is it goes around the banking system and then it doesn't go through the banking system and that's a key thing of a key feature of how we've designed to help the, that operation um, the Macclesfield town has set up, business leaders in the town have set up an economic forum you know, in, you know, in order to support local businesses and, and try and stimulate growth. What's your, uh, what's your take on that and what's your advice to them? I, so we've spoken, I haven't spoken to the Macclesfield Economic Forum this time around, but I've spoken to two or three other ones in uh, Greater Manchester over the last couple of days. I think those forums are incredibly useful as a way of providing greater networks, um, uh, across different businesses within local regions. And one thing which is striking when you come up to a region like the Northwest is there's a strong sense of local identity, a sense of people wanting to help each other, different businesses within the region. Um, and when you come to a place like the Northwest, that's striking compared to some other parts of the country. And exploiting that and recognizing there is a sense of that, that people in, in the same region can help each other. And um, I think it's a really valuable uh, process, and and, you, and and these sort of various forms of business forums and networking processes, are, I think, are, are really good for, for providing a mechanism for that to happen. We also went to one in, in Oldham yesterday, where we saw a group of businessmen um, working with Oldham Council. So it's not just businesses. Um, increasingly, we will see the private sector businesses providing support and advice for local authorities, which again. Uh, is a really important part of the process by which local government can communicate with businesses to make sure that both are working in an efficient, um, uh, complementary way. What about the future? How? Do, I mean, what's the predictions of uh, yeah for the future? I mean, is it going to get? Is it going to be a bit of a hard slog, three, five years, or? So I think perhaps two points of the on the future. One is. An important part of what we do on the Monetary Policy Committee, our key objective is to hit a 2% inflation target. That's our job. Mm. At the moment, um, your readers will, be, will, will, will know full well that inflation is substantially higher than that. Um, the most recent reading had inflation at, at over 5%. Mm. The good news is I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident inflation should fall quite sharply at the beginning of next year. So the, the pain that many households have been um, feeling um, over the past year or so with high inflation, that, that pain should start to ease um, next year as inflation falls back. And I should hope to see a, a, a really quite sharp falling back in inflation at the beginning of next year. So that, mm -hmm. And that will help to reduce some of the, the pressure on, on household budgets. So that's, I think, a, a good news story. The other feature is, is growth in the UK. We can do so much here to try to support growth, and the Monetary Policy Committee moved um, this, this month to try to do that. But we can only do so much here when a lot of what is affecting our economy at the moment is what's happening in the rest of the world. And so um, a, a key factor in terms of prospects over the next year or so is the hope that, um, that particularly within, Euro, the, within the Euro area, some of that uncertainty can be um, addressed and dispelled um, relatively quickly, and so that uncertainty, which is weighing on our economy, um, is lifted. And uh, when when we're going to see you back uh, again in the northwest? Um, I try and get back up here most most years, eighteen months. I think it's about eighteen months since I was I, I was last up here, um, and and I'll I'll continue to do so because, as I said right from the beginning, 
But we're here to listen and learn, and you know, we have to do that if you're setting monetary policy. We set monetary policy for the United Kingdom as a whole, not just for London. And if we sit in London the whole time, we won't find out what's going on in the rest of the country. And that's why we have to get out and about. And